Most gracious, loving Father in heaven, we come unto you this morning. We thank you, Lord, so much for the many, many blessings that you have provided upon us. Thank you for this beautiful Sabbath day. And I ask, Lord, that you please um, be in control of uh, this uh, lesson study. Please help us to learn from it, Father. Thank you, Lord, so much for always loving us. Thank you for Jesus who died in the cross so that we can be saved. Please hear our prayer now, Lord, because we offer this in the loving name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. Amen. Okay. Last week, we, we stopped at, we actually we started at question number six, which is what do our works, words reveal? And we, I know we did not finish that, so I'm going to just, if we can go back to Luke, I'm just going to read it, Luke 6, 45. The question we're trying to answer is, what do our words reveal? A good man out of a good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil, for of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. It is very true. What is whatever you know? Sometimes we can only hide so much, but eventually the truth will come out, and it usually come out of the mouth first. Okay, and let's uh, review uh, Matthew twelve thirty three to thirty five. Either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt, and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit, O generation of vipers. How can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. And I'm going to read to you uh, counsels to parents, teachers, and students Page 189.1. The great teacher calls on nature to reflect the light that floods the threshold of heaven, that men and women may be led to obey his word. And nature does not bid, does the bidding of the creator. To the heart, softened by the grace of God, the sun, the moon, the stars, the lofty trees, the flowers in the field, utter their words of counsel and advice. The sowing of the seed carries the mind to spiritual so seed sowing. The tree stands forth declaring that a good tree cannot bear evil fruit, neither can an evil tree bear good fruit. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Matthew 7, 16. Even the tares have lessons to, to teach. They are of Satan's sowing, and if left unchecked, will spoil the wheat by their rank growth. Any evil tendency, if left unchecked, will grow and will blossom. It's going to uh, choke the good things in us. What it's talking about real here is that um, the, the wheat, I mean, the, the wheat is, uh, of course, the good, the good tendency that we have. And we know that as a human being, we don't really have that. Because our, natu our, our nature, our, the natural is to do evil things. But... When you are connected with, with, uh, with the true vine, then it's, it's uh, you know, you are becoming, I'm sure that you have experienced in your life that unle unless you are born Adventist and you are really connected to God at the time you grow, you, ha you always, you know, when you are from the world, you can see how much the, the word of God have really changed you, you know? So the evil, now, and then as a person that is changing to, for the better, and then when that's the, the, the bad uh, seed is growing and it's having some leaves and growing up, and if you do not get it checked, if you do not bring it to the foot of the cross, it's going to keep on growing. And next thing you know, you're back to where you are, being an evil person that you are. But that's why we have to be careful to, um, to make sure that we are always being checked by the word of God because we have to put our own effort. So that, what that means is we are going to read our Bible. We are going to pray every day. We are going to, uh, because you know, I, I'm sure, I don't know if you have ever experienced that. I do. I experience it almost all the time. When you, you dedicate yourself to God in the morning, you get your, you know, your devotional in the morning, you go to work, and then all of a sudden at work, somebody tick you off, and in your head, I'm going to give this person a piece of my mind. 
you are determined to do it. But before you open your mouth, since you dedicated yourself to God, somebody tell you, really? Really, Yolanda, you're going to do that? You're going to dishonor me? And then you change. And you say something that you never wanted to say. <laughs> but you, and then later on at the end of the day, when you worship in the evening, you praise God for subduing your evil spirit. You know? But this comes with, with uh, totally devotion to God. Totally. Because if you know, if you don't, you will, you will, you will submit to the evil one. I mean, I experience it all the time. In, I'm telling you, sometimes several times a day, I want to just say, I wanna, I'm going to do what I want to do. But the Holy Spirit really subdue you. And then you just realize, man, I said something I'm not going to say. But, you know, at the end of the day, people thank you for being patient. Okay, anyway, let's go to question number seven. By what are the true wisdom and understanding revealed? James 3.13. May I please have a volunteer? Yes. James chapter 3, verse 13. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge? Among you, let him shew out of a good conversation his works with meekness of, of wisdom. Amen. Can somebody, uh, you know what, let's talk about this. Uh, it's very short, but it's full of wisdom, really. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out a good conversation, his work with meekness of wisdom. Not conversation by speech, but conversation by actions, right? That's what it's saying. Uh, let him show out of a good conversation his works. You can talk all day long that you are Christian, but your works is going to manifest who you are. Okay, brother. Brother Burton. Oh. I was just about to say... Um, there's a lot of people in this world that claim to be Christian. Mm -hmm. And I remember um, when I was having a Bible study at my uncle's house, not this last time, but the time before that, there was a gentleman that was there. And his take on it was, oh, well, you know, uh, Christian church persecuted. I said, wait a minute. <laughs> when you talk about the Christian church, the Christian church did not persecute the saints. I said, the Catholic Church persecuted the saints. I said, there's a lot of people that have a name. They claim to have a name. They claim, oh, I'm a Christian. But the only way we can really call ourselves a Christian is if we are doing the things that Christ would want us to do. Amen. So a lot of people say, well, I'm a, I'm a Seventh-day Adventist, or I'm a Baptist, or I'm a whatever, whatever you want to call yourself. Mm -hmm. But are you living up to the light that you have? And I think um, with the book of James, James is showing the importance of obedience. Yeah. You know, he says that faith without works is dead. Mm -hmm. Well, if you don't live out your faith, then you're not showing your works through your faith. You see what I'm saying? If we claim, we all believe that we're Seventh-day Adventists here. If we claim to believe in the Sabbath, yet we don't want to keep the Sabbath and, you know, we're doing all kind of things, then we can't say that, oh, I'm, I'm a Seventh-day Adventist. We can't say that. Mm -hmm. But we know that it's only through Christ that we have the ability to show our works Amen. And, and, and have our works with our faith. Amen. So it's all through Christ. Amen. And uh, let's please somebody read note four. Uh, while I have the mic, I could uh, go ahead and read note four. And uh, let's see here. Good morning. Note four, proud, haughty, disdainful, unholy persons may pass for great scholars and have the reputation of being very learned, but such do not have true wisdom. This comes from above 
and is revealed in a holy life. Amen. See, in, you know, sometimes, you, like when I'm studying this, I was reading it, it's just like go right to your head, you know? You did not even understand what you read. Some, that's why sometimes I read at least two, three times. Like look, note four, proud, haughty, disdainful, unholy person may pass for great scholars and have a reputation of being very learned. Let's say, for example, you are somebody who's so important. People bow down when you walk. People give you way. They, you say a word, they listen to you. But if you do not have wisdom, that's nothing. It says it that this comes, meaning wisdom comes from above and revealed in a holy life. Even if you have a such a high position, you have a pres you're president of the United States, but you do not know God, you are nobody. You're only somebody when you're with God. That's it. You know? And uh, we can bring people to God by us being reflecting uh, God's character. I thought about something. You know, in my work, I remember I, last Sabbath I was telling you that when I was going to be transferred to this work, I tell you, God knows because I told him. I refused to go. I didn't want to go. I asked him to take this away from me, but not my will, but his will. Now I'm there, and uh, I was dreading to be there because, you know, people there, I was told that are this and that. But I have seen it too, that they are divided. You know, people are talking, you know, it's bad. But... Wednesday, let me just give you a little background. We have discharged this patient to a lower level of care. And uh, there's a brother. And I told them, you know, the protocol is you call the family to let them know what's happening with the patient, right? So, but they told me that this family member, this brother, never calls back. Ne is never involved, never attend the meeting. So I told them, when we discharge, just let the brother know, call, but do not wait for that return call because... Um, if we wait, we're never going to discharge the patient. Make the long story short, we discharge the patient. All of a sudden, the brother is calling us now. And, and uh, he's very mad. He's going to sue us, all these things. Anyway, he's been doing that. Wednesday, uh, the social worker told me that he, called again, he came to the facility. He was angry and this and that. So I said, okay, tomorrow I'm going to call because he's calling me when I'm already home. So Thursday, I'm supposed to talk to the brother, right? So I get her hands. I said, do you pray? She said, no. So I said, okay. I am going before we call the brother, because the brother is very angry, using all kinds of profanity language and all these things, angry. So I said, I'm going to pray on my own. And, uh, and then after I pray, we're going to call. So I prayed, and then we called. You know, when we called that man, he was so nice. He did not even argue, nothing. Meaning, so I explained to Liz, you know, that's what happened, Liz, when you pray. So I was telling uh, them in the car today, maybe this is one of the reasons that I'm, I'm in Park Quest. Maybe this woman is ready for God. She just doesn't know it, but maybe she's ready. Because she was surprised. Because, you know, the man was so angry. All of a sudden, I call him, he's not angry anymore. And he is, he is peaceable, you know. So maybe that's one of the, the reasons why I'm there. So when God is, is, is uh, you know, trying to, everything that we do is always, is because, you know, like God is guiding us. Or God is bringing us to somebody that needs to know him. So we really have to represent him right. That's why every single day I, oh, I'm praying that, Lord, please help me to be a Christian. Help me to be a true Christian. Because, you know, if we are not true Christian, who can we guide to the, to the foot of the cross? Nobody. Okay. So let me read. Um, 5T 175.1. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. My brethren and sisters, how are you employing the gift of speech? Have you learned so to control the tongue that, is, that it shall ever obey the dictates of an enlightened conscience and holy affection? So the question is, have you tamed your tongue that it will always listen to the dictates of enlightened and conscience and holy affections? Is your conversation free from levity, pride, and malice, deceit, and impurity? Are you without guile before God? Words exert a telling power. 
Satan will, if possible, keep the tongue active in his service, meaning that he will use your tongue, my tongue, to you know, defile ourselves and defile others. Ourse of ourselves, we cannot control the unruly member. Divine grace is our only hope. That's why we only need, we really have to be, con be conscientious of being connected with God every single moment of our life. Okay, let's go to um, question number eight. Oh, before that, I just want to say, you know, learn or higher education will not give us wisdom. Only the education we get from the Bible. That's it. We get wisdom, wisdom from it. That, that Bible is going to make us strong. Bible is going to make us true Christian. Okay, number eight. Through what, was, through what was the true light made known to the world. Please uh, read that. Chap John chapter 1, 4. May I please have a volunteer. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And can you please also read John 9 chapter 5. Chapter 5, verse 5. I mean, John chapter 9, verse 5. It says, As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Okay. So, God is, Jesus is saying, as long as he's in the world, he is the light of the world. So, for us, the Bible also said that we are the light of the world. Mm -hmm. So how do we become one? How do we become the light of the world? We show Christ, oh sorry. Okay. <laughs> we show Christ to others um, through our lives. We need to be kind, to be loving towards other people. And that's how we sh share his light with others. Amen. Brother? Oh, okay. Nila, want to say something? I was reading this morning um, one of the um, devotional thought, and it says, Whatsoever you do, do it heartedly as to the Lord and not unto men. And there's a part here that I was reading. It says, This life is full of gracious opportunities which you, which you can improve in the exercise, exercise of your God, giving <coughs> abilities to bless others, and in so doing, bless yourself without considering self in the matter. Trivial circumstances oftentimes prove a decided blessing to the one who acts from principle and has formed the habit of doing right because it is right. Seek for a perfect character and let all that you do, whether seen and appreciated by human eyes or not, be done with an eye single to God's glory because you belong to God and he has redeemed you at the price of his own life. Be faithful in the least as well as in the greatest. Learn to speak the truth. To act all, t all times the truth. Let the heart be fully submitted to God. If controlled by his grace, you will do little deeds of kindness. Take up the duties lying next to you and bring all the sunshine into your life and character that it is possible to bring, scattering the gifts of love and blessing along the pathway of life. Amen. Wouldn't it be nice if every day we're able to really, truly scatter the blessing that God has given us? Just your smile alone is going to make a big difference, you know. So don't walk around with a, with a gloomy face, <laughs> you know, looking like uh, you are so defeated that everybody borrowed money from you, you know. <laughs> so we have to show that we are uh, you happy people, you know, because being with God really is it's peace and joy, you know. <coughs> Anyhow, let me read to you Desire of Ages 464.1. By one who listened to these words, they were long afterward re-echoed in the sub sublime passage. In him was life, and the life was the light of man. In the light shineth in the darkness, in the darkness apprehended it not. So, you know, when Jesus, it's talking about when Jesus was here. He was the light of the world, but the world did not recognize him. That was the true light, which lighted every man that cometh into the world. And long after Jesus had ascended to heaven, Peter also, writing under the illumination of the, of the divine spirit, recalled the symbol of Christ had used. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn 
and the day star rise in your in your hearts. Second Peter one nine. So it's uh, you know we really that uh, it's sometimes it sounds so simple, but it's not really simple, because you know to have God in our heart, to have God imbe- embedded in our heart, has something to do with us too. We need to also have some effort from us. We need to choose Him number one. And if we choose him, we have to choose to spend time with him too. You know, like sometimes I would call a friend, right? I only um, want to talk to that friend for a moment because I want to say, you know, something important, right? But sometimes you end up talking with that friend for like hours on the phone, correct? This also what should happen with us. Sometimes like in the morning you pick up your Bible and you just wanted to to revisit something that is in your head, right? Like... Uh, something, a passage, you want to read it. And then you get stuck spending with with God, uh, reading, you know, and the next thing you know, you are spending hours with God. That would be, that's a good experience, you know, and you, you feel, I don't know if you ever experienced that when you are reading, you're spending time with God when you actually feel peace. You actually know that the Holy Spirit is there with you, you know. And this is what happened, like, you know, when you really, really spend time with God. And this is what happened when you call your friend that you have not talked for a long time. You talk for hours. We should do this with God. Talk with God for hours. I can never forget Handel, um, you know, one of a um, church member in our uh, uh, church before in Pasadena before where we used to go. He told me. Uh, he Actually, he was, I think in the Sabbath school also, he said that Spe- pray for 30 minutes. In my head, 30 minutes, I cannot even pray for like five minutes. <laughs> you know, at that time, 30 minutes. So after his talk, I talked to him. I said, brother, how do you pray for 30 minutes? That's very long. Number one, it's going to hurt my knees. I was, <laughs> I was telling him. I was being honest, you know. And he said, sister, you know, you, when you talk to God, he said, just you tell him, you open your heart to him. You tell him about your day. You, and you sometimes you pause, you listen to his word, you know, and then sometimes text will come into your head, and you continue to pray. You know, you, and then next thing you know, you are there praying more than 30 minutes, he said. And, and you know, I tried that. And I, sometimes like, I have to go to the, you know, sometimes CJ got mad at me, he said, come on, we got to go to work. Because I, I find myself praying, and then I was praying. I only wanted to say thank you and Bless me, use me, and then I, I'm there talking already with God for a while. And, and, and it's beautiful. And then you go to your day, even though there's so much challenges, it doesn't even feel like it's a challenge because you just close your eyes a little bit, or even sometimes you don't even close your eyes, you just communicate, and God give you wisdom. God give you wisdom. So it's good to be to connected. To be connected is so good. When you are not connected, you feel defeated. You feel defeated. Whatever happens, you know, Sometimes little things makes you so mad. It makes you so stressed out. Why? Because you did not spend time with God. Okay? That's why, you know, sometimes you can be so by the book, you know, by letters. You memorize the darn Ten Commandments. You know you're doing the Ten Commandments. You memorize it. You don't curse. You, you don't commit adultery. You don't kill. You don't all do all these things. But you just, but then you don't have a relationship. With God. So it's just you, you are like a, so, so fanatic that later on, somebody, and, and, and when you go to church, you see everything in the church. Oh, the sister is doing this. Oh, the sister this. Oh, this brother this. Why? Because you are not connected. But it, because if you are connected, you will never see. Because you're going to see yourself. You're going to see yourself. You know, like now, when, when I read the Bible, sometimes, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm so sinful like how how can i be better you know because you see you see when you connect yourself you will see the more you will see yourself how sinful you are you know and and uh, you're gonna try to ask you're gonna continue to ask god to give you more energy more power to 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 subdue yourself because you know we always think that oh the devil is your enemy sometimes look at yourself maybe yourself is your enemy you know, you want to do things because you want to please yourself. You know, that's why sometimes it's so hard to swallow your pride. Because it's not, you know, you want to always be, 
to please yourself. Somebody cross you, right away you're mad. You right away you want to give them a piece of your mind. And then you put yourself in trouble. And then later on, after you pray, oh, you realize you're at fault. And then you're going to have to go back and say sorry to your sister. In the first, in there, but you know, sometimes when you already hurt somebody, you hurt somebody already. You already said the word. The bell that is, uh, what they say, the bell that is rang, ring or rang, whatever. You cannot un- unring it, something like that. If you did it already, done. Yes, you can go apologize. You can go apologize, but sometimes damage was done. You know, and you don't want to be part of it. You don't want to be part of someone that's, you know, already have a problem and you add to their problem just because you don't have patience. Just because you did not spend time with God in the morning. You know, it's really honest. When you, because I experienced that all the time when I was in a rush and I didn't have the time to spend with God. My day is kind of difficult. Because, you know, you don't have patience. I, I find that because my patience is my, my really, that's my, um, my challenge. You know, my patience is so short, you know. That's, that's why I need to really pray every single solitary day to give me, you know, to give me strength to be patient. Otherwise, I snap. I snap every day. I, if you're not with God, you, you, you do the same thing. So we just have to do it. And, and spend time with God. Anyway, it's good for our soul. Let's go to question number nine. If we have strife in the heart, what are we bidden not to do? James 3.14. May I please have a reader? James chapter 3, verse 14 says, But if ye have bitter envyings and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. So we're not supposed to be proud of the anger that we have in our hearts. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I told this person X, Y, and Z. I gave them a piece of my mind. Yeah. We're not supposed to do that. And you're proud, no? You know, that, that text that you started off with, I thought was um, uh, really interesting, the one about the trees. You know, can a tree produce both, uh, you know, two different types of fruit? It can't. You know, we can only produce one or the other. So if we have bitter feelings Mm -hmm. and we're saying bitter things to people, Mm -hmm. then that means that we ourselves, we need to check ourselves. But like you were saying, I find the same thing too. When I make the time to spend with the Lord, and I say make the time because the devil will give you all sorts of uh, good things to do. Oh, I got to fold these clothes or, oh, I got to do laundry or I got to do this, I got to do that. We have to make the time in the morning to spend with God. Mm-hmm. And I find that um, my day also goes well when I do what I'm supposed to do. But whenever you don't do what you're supposed to do, you know, when you don't spend time with the Lord, then every little thing gets on your nerves. Yeah. But, you know, I think that's, you know, like Sister White talks about us spending a, a, a thoughtful hour contemplating the life of Christ, especially the closing scenes of his life. Mm-hmm. When you think about those things, how can you possibly get mad? Yeah. You know, if you think about it, they were spitting on him, beating him with whips. They're doing all these things. Mm-hmm. And yet somebody says a word to us and we want to get upset. Yeah. We haven't resisted unto blood. We should be you know, we should be more conscious of what um, the saints of old have, have gone through. Amen. But, you know, by the grace of God, I really hope that we keep these things in mind every day so that we can actually live the way we're supposed to live and that we can be a light. Yes. Amen. Amen. And um, I, can I please have a volunteer to read note six? I'll read note six. It says, if ye be under the influence of an unkind, fierce, and contemptuous spirit, even while attempting or pretending to defend true, true religion, do not boast. Ye have no religion and no true wisdom, and to profess either is to lie against the truth. So we shouldn't get mad at people either when they disagree with our point of view. I mean, if you think about it, when you study the Dark Ages, can you imagine living during that period of time? Mm-hmm. 
where everybody is against you. Everybody's trying to kill you for your faith. Mm -hmm. Now, had they turned around and gotten mad, then they would not have um, really died a martyr's death or a real martyr's death. Mm -hmm. You know, they stood for the truth. Yeah. But if the truth abides in us, we shouldn't be, you know, we shouldn't be ready to be so mad at people. Oh, can you believe this person believes this or that? No, we need to pray. Yeah. Like you were talking about, we need to pray. Yeah, that is true. We have to really learn to pray, you know, without ceasing. Without ceasing. All day long, we have to pray. Because Satan, that's why I always say, you know, you need to know your enemy. You need to know your enemy. Because that's the only way you can defeat your enemy. In the war, you know, the generals, they study their enemies, right? How they're going to attack. Even in, for example, in sports, they study the opponent. How they're going to defeat that opponent. You know, in basketball, for instance, you know, I, I remember I never knew how to watch sports uh, before. But, you know, well, this is when we are in the world. I really, honest to you, I thank God for this church. Because, because without this church, we are not in the truth. We are in the world, and we enjoy that, you know. I, I can never forget my husband and I before. Uh, I watch, what is it that I used to watch? I forgot now. Young and the Restless, the, all those things. The soap opera, I know there's another one. Uh, and he was always watching sports. I would be in the bedroom watching my thing, and he would be in the living room watching sports, right? And then finally, I think he realized that we are kind of apart because we are watching each other's show. So he told me, he said, listen, I'm going to start watching your show, and you're going to start watching my sports so that we can be at least together while we're watching. So I learned how to watch sports with him. So they, they, they learn and they would, they would study their, their opponent too because he watched the, all kinds about the sports he watched. It. So I learned about it. So you, you know, you have to learn about it before you can understand and before you can understand it. The same with us in, our, in, in, the, in the truth. You need to learn about it first. When you learn about it, you can actually talk about it. And then they, people, when you're talking about it, people will understand because you know. Can you imagine me talking about sports when I don't understand about it? I'll probably confuse the, the people and they're going to say, this woman is a fool. You see, the same thing with that word. The same thing with the word. You cannot talk about it if you do not know it. You can, you just can. And even, for example, you, you're talking about, oh, being a Christian, being this and that. But your fruit is showing, like, like the Bible said, one, the tree cannot bear, an apple cannot bear an orange. Do you want an orange? You plant an orange. Whatever you want, you want to be a Christian, you plant Christianity in your life. You have to make an effort. It's a cooperation between us and God. God cannot do it for us. It's, you know, like some people think it's a magic. That, you know, you, you just pray and you're going to be good. No, there's work that comes with it. There's works that, that's why uh, James said that, I w who was that that said it? That I will show you my faith with works, you know? Because it has to have work. We have to, sub to subdue ourselves. We need to know our enemy to defeat our enemy. If you don't know your enemy, you're not going to be able to defeat them because they'll come to you in sheep clothing. Mm -hmm. Okay, number 10. From what source that does such wisdom come. From what source does, does such wisdom come? James 3.15. May I please have a reader? James 3, chapter 3, verse 15. James 3.15. The Bible says here, this wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. Okay. So th what's talking about is the world. You know how you, when you are, um, we go back to that verse in uh, James 3.14. But if you have bitter envying strife in your, strife in your heart, it's, it's from the devil. It's not from God. God is not going to give that to us. When we have God, we don't have envying. So meaning to say that, if as a Christian person you still have, you, st you envy others, 
that means you are very, very undone because that's part of what we need to remove from ourselves. Jealousy, envying. When somebody has something, you want it too. You know, like there's a saying, you want what the Joneses have. You don't want them. That might bring you to hell. Correct? Okay. Let's, uh, let me just read to you Great Controversy 5, 5, 4.1. Satan beguiles men as he beguiled Eve in Eden by flattery, by kindling a desire to obtain forbidden knowledge, by exciting ambition of self-exaltation. It was cherishing the devils, the devils that caused his fall, and through them he aims to com compass the ruin of men. Ye shall be as gods, he declares, knowing good and evil. Genesis 3.5 Spiritualism teaches that man is the creature of progression. It is this his destiny from his birth to progress, even to eternity toward the Godhead. And again, each mind will judge itself and an not another. The judgment will be right because it is the judgment of self. The throne is within you, said a spiritualistic teacher. As the spiritual consciousness awoke within him, my fellow men, all were unfallen demigods, and another declares any just and perfect being is Christ. So what do you say about that? We cannot, you know, like the devil has a lot of ways to deceive us. With Eve, he deceived Eve by, say, but by um, attracting him, saying that you are going to uh, be like God. And do you know there's a lot of people that want to be like God? If you notice, at work, you know, there's some, I really relate with work because so many things, because that's when you are, you, sometimes your guard is off. And, and you will see sometimes like there's some people that are given little power and they run with it the other way. It's okay if you run with it going to God and everything is being given to God, you give it to him in, his, in the foot of the cross. But sometimes they're just little power and they're like, like so, and, and, Oh, sometimes when I look and I see, I feel so sad, you know, and we, all we could do sometimes is pray for them. And let's, if, they, if that's our boss, they oppress us. But we give it to God. We give it to God, you know. This is when, uh, that's why we need, we need God in our life. I was, uh, in our, one of our worship, I was telling Sean that uh, he needs to be really equipped with the power of God, with the word of God. Why? Right now, we, we are preparing, right? We are, we are not given a timeline when Jesus is coming. But the Bible says that when Jesus is coming, we are going to be persecuted. We're going to be, you know, the world is going to ask you, do you serve God? If you serve God, they'll kill you or put you to jail. Or they will ask you to choose between your child and God. You believe in God? Okay, I'll kill your child. So would you be able to stand Somebody asking you to choose between God and Satan. If you choose God, they'll shoot your son, for instance. Which one are you going to choose? If your, your faith is weak, you will choose your son. But if your faith is strong, you will choose God. Why? Because you know you're going to see your son again when Jesus comes again. And you believe it in your heart. But if you do not, it's, you're going you're gonna to be lost. You're going to be lost. And what you as a parent, you believe, you transfer to your children. Remember, they're watching you. They're listening to you. You will be the example. One day, we're not going to be with them. Who's going to? But if you give them the wisdom that's coming from above, that's going to follow them. Just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were teenagers when they went to Babylon. But their parents are good. I cannot say their parents is not good. Why? You cannot have a child like that. The fruit you can see from the children. You know, the tree have bear good fruit, which stand even they are, their life was threatened to be thrown in the fire furnace. It's the parents. That's why as a parent, we have a job to do. We have a job to do. In our child, we have to take them to God every single solitary day, many times a day. Because, you know, you are not... You know, we are there, we ta we're talking to them, we're giving them instructions, right? But the devil can work in their heart, in their mind too. 
So you have to pray so that they can be protected. Nila. Um, it made me think of um, Abraham and Isaac when um, Abraham had to offer him up, you know, as a sacrifice. And we know that um, Abraham then he was, you know, older, or whatever. And Isaac could have easily, you know, overpowered him. But mm -hmm. it showed you that Abraham, as a father, did his part to teach him, mm -hmm. you know, everything that yeah. he knew from God. Mm -hmm. And since he knew Isaac knew that the, um, what Abraham was about to do came from God, he accepted it. Because, you know, he had faith just like his father. And mm -hmm. if you, um, then there's a point that says that um, the whole household, Abraham taught his whole household, his servants, everyone mm -hmm. knew about God to him. Yeah, amen, amen. It has to be like that, even with us. It can be if we su just surrender it. If we surrender. Okay, number 11. What is the fruitage of envy and strife? So what is the fruit of envy and strife? Let's find out. James 3.16. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. That is correct. It's, a, it's so short, right? For, for where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. Because, you know, when, when there is envy, there is strife. Because you envy. You know, you're jealous. So those are from the devil. It's not from God. God did not teach us to, to, to be envious of someone. You know, we have to be happy with who we are, how God made us. You know, this is the reason why some people, they, they do something to their face because they want to be some, they want to look perfect. What I mean is, you know, when surgeries, you know, Botox and everything, not satisfied. If you have God with you, but you will. God did not create anybody ugly. Everybody is beautiful. You know? Everybody is beautiful. So you cannot be. That's when, when God is not with you. Actually, in our conversation in the car, we have, I have a friend that, you know, she is somewhere looking for her soul. I, we, we said we really have to pray for her because hopefully we can find a way to give Bible study to her. Because when you have God. You don't have to be looking, going in other countries to find your soul. You go to your Bible, go to your closet and pray. You find your soul. God will, you know, it is, I don't know if you see, it is so good to be with God. When you are with God, you are so at peace. You are so fulfilled. It's, you are like whole. You know, you look forward to spending time with God. You look forward to going home to your family because you are with God. There are some people that I know. And I, sometimes I offer pr that we can pray in Bible study because, you know, they dread to go home. That's your home. That's why I always uh, tell my husband, you know, me and my husband, we always talk about we making our home heaven on earth for Sean. Because, uh, you know, like, I want my son to be able to come home. Let's say he, he is in the world already. I mean, not in the world, but he is, you know, like working, you know, he have his life. And he has trouble. I want him to be able to learn how to go to God, of course. But when they want to come home, they can come home. And knowing that they can come home to a home where there is peace and joy. And nobody is staying you know, like sometimes, you know, I don't know if you ever experienced. And I would question if you, if you didn't. There's some home that the parents are talking constantly. Like, you know, sometimes your child just wants to vent. Be quiet and listen for a minute. And then later on, give an advice. Sometimes we just have to be quiet for a minute, you know, and listen. Because if you're not listening, you're not going to understand where they're coming from. And then you're not going to be able to give a good advice. While you're listening, you pray. That's what I always do. While I'm listening, I pray. The only time sometimes that I'm not able to listen <laughs> to my husband. <laughs> I like, but I, I learn how to listen too. I, okay, I be quiet. L Yolanda, better be quiet. You know, you know, like, uh, but when you pray, everything comes to in, into place. Everything comes into place. Because that's my, that's my, uh, my, my challenge, really, my, my patience. And actually, my husband and my son, both of them are, are helping me with my patience because, you know, remember, at home, you practice. So I ask them to help me with my patience. Because, you know, especially like, uh, 
I don't like things on the floor, things like that. I don't like my home to be cluttered. I don't have, want the sink, for example, the, the faucet. I like that to be always shiny. And so, you know, with them, I'm learning how to be patient with those. Those are unimportant. You know, you just have uh, to, you know, sometimes I like to clean the house before spending time with them. So they tell me, you know what, today we're not going to clean the house. We're going to spend time together. We're going to spend time together. And I learned how to do that too. I have to adjust so that I can have my family be happy. You know, stop cleaning, they tell me. Stop cleaning. <laughs> and sometimes Karen will come to our house. Oh, Karen, excuse our home is so dirty. And she will tell me, Ate, it's not dirty, it's clean. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's unorganized. No, it's not unorganized, it's organized. Because sometimes I have that thing, you know. It's, it's in my head, I guess. Mm -hmm. But I have to learn how to remove that from my head. Okay? Uh, what number are we? 12, okay, number 12. What are we earnestly exhorted to lay aside? 1 Peter 2, 1. First Peter 2, 1. May I please have a volunteer? First Peter chapter 3, or 2, or 2, I'm sorry, First Peter chapter 2, and verse 1. First Peter chapter 2, verse 1 says, Wherefore, laying aside all malice and guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speaking. Lay it aside, remove it from us. Remove it from us. The malice. You know, you're, sometimes you're so malicious. You just hear something and you run with it. You know? Remove it. You know, remove it from us. You know, you just see something, you, you already concluded. You know? Guile, hypocrisy. Hypocrisy is, you know, like, uh, I'm sure you know, like pretending to be Christian. But you have so much anger in your heart. Okay, brother. Hypocrisy is also telling someone, oh, this person's doing this, this, and this, and you're doing the same thing. Amen. Amen. That is true. You know, you're so quick to judge others, you did not even look in the mirror. Before we, you know, it would help, I guess, if, if we can practice that before you say something against somebody, pray first and ask God, Lord, is this something that I do too? Maybe God will tell us more, <laughs> you know, more. So we, we have to be careful. That's why, you know, sometimes when I notice something, I have, you know, I have that, I said, do I do something? Sometimes I, say, I even ask Sean or my husband, do I do that too? And they say, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, I said, okay, I'll try to remove that from me, you know. So because they are my, it's, it's almost like they are my mirror. And I'm their mirror. So we, because we agree in our home that we are going to check each other. So they are my mirror and I'm their mirror. So I will, and they say, oh, do I do that? Yes, mama, you do that. Oh, okay, I'm going to do my best not to do that. You know, learning. We have to learn. This is, you know, you have to remove your pride. Imagine your son is telling you you are wrong. If I have pride still, too much of it, I don't think I will listen to my son. Because I'm his mother. I'm supposed to discipline him, right? But if he is right, I should listen. So I become a better person. Amen. Nila. It's interesting you say that because um, I remember one time I was um, <coughs> talking to my um, husband. You know how you vet, which sometimes we probably shouldn't. But anyway, I was venting to my husband about someone. <laughs> and he was like, well, you know what? Instead of doing that, why don't you pray for them? Of course, you know, that would... I was like, okay, well, there's nothing you can say after that. So I was like, okay, I guess I'll pray for them. And um, so the other day he was doing the same thing. So like you said, we are each other's, you know, mirror. I was like, well, you know, instead of talking about it, why don't you pray for them too? He was like, oh, okay, never mind then. <laughs> so. <Yeah. laughs> oh, never mind. <laughs> so, yeah. Because, so, you know, what can you say if you tell someone pray for somebody? There's nothing else. There's no other. Just pray for them. And, and that's it. That's all you can do. 
That's true. And you know what? Oh, I'm going to give you a, a quick testimony because I'm almost out of time. You know, um, I believe that I'm also here in, uh, in, in a, a new place because God is really te- asking me to pray more. Because when I just started at Griffith Park where my husband is now in Karen and Nila, you know, I pray every day, many times a day in that work because I have so many challenges in that work. I pray many times a day. But my life there is better now. And, you know, I have good relationship with doctors, with my coworkers. My life there is really good. I have no problem. You know, people love me and I tell them something. And they are very cooperative with me. So meaning I really don't have problem there. So now I'm in this new place. I tell you the truth. I pray a lot. I've been praying a lot again. I pray because I need him. I need him there. I need them to, because all of them are fighting against, against each other. And you know what? Though I'm only there for three weeks, I see big difference already because I have been on my knees. But you know, I've been, you know, like since sometimes that happens to us when our life is good, we, pro- we forget to pray. We forget to pray. We should not do that. You know, I have to practice that, that if my life is good, I pray more. I'm going to ask God for, for, wisdom, for uh, strength to do that. Because, you know, I have that tendency when my life is good, I pray in the morning, in the evening, that was it. Throughout the day, I did not pray, you know. Now I'm again praying eh, without ceasing again. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, you know. But, you know, that's the, the beauty of, of being with God, though, being a child of God. Remember, we never, God never leave us. We leave him. And then he come and call us. He has made, he has a way to call us back. He has a way to help us become mature. Like me being in Parkways, I know he's helping me to become mature, you know, because I'm, I'm again in my knees all the time. Okay, let me read this to you. Reflecting Christ 200.2. I urge our people to cease their criticism and evil speaking and to go to God in earnest prayer, asking him to help them to help the earring. Let them link up with one another and with Christ. Let them study the seventh of John, seven. 10th of John, and learn how to pray and how to live the prayer of Christ. He is the comforter. He will abide in their hearts, making their joy full. His words will be, will be to them as a bread of life. And in the strength thus gained, they will be enabled to develop characters that will be an honor to God. Perfect Christian fellowship will exist among them. There will be seen in their lives, the fruit that always appear as the result of obedience to the truth. See, again, we go back to obedience. Okay, let's go to uh, question 13. What led the people to crucify Christ? Matthew 27, 18. May I please have a volunteer? Twenty-seven eighteen. Yes. Matthew twenty seven eighteen. It says, For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. See? What led them to crucify Christ? For envy. Can you please also read Mark fifteen ten? Okay. For he knew that the chief priest had delivered him for envy. For envy. You know, envy is very evil. You know, when once you start uh, being envious on, on somebody, you will do something to destroy that person. Mm-hmm. That is very evil. Anyway, let me read to you. Evangelism 400.1. Preach in your lives the practical godliness of the faith that you believe. Let it be seen that the truth never degrades the the receiver, making him rough in course or fretful or impatient. Make apparent to all your patience, your kindness, your long-suffering, gentleness, compassion, and true goodness, for these graces are the expression of a character of God whom you serve. Okay, brother. I was reading in my devotion this week, um, John chapter 11, you said envy, and it just made me think of the passage that I read. 
John chapter 11, beginning um, with verse 45, and this is dealing with why Jesus was delivered to them. And it says, Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen on the things which Jesus did believed on him. But some of them went their way to the Pharisees and told them what things Jesus had done. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees and counsel and said, What do we? For this man doeth many miracles. Mm -hmm. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him. And the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. Mm -hmm. And one of them named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, Ye know nothing at all, nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for this people, and that the whole nation perish not. So they're really jealous over, okay, Jesus, he's doing all these good works. Yeah. And here he is healing people, raised Lazarus from the dead, did all these wonderful things, but they didn't like him because they have this jealousy. Oh, well, you know, if we leave him alone, then, you know, everybody's going to believe on him and they won't, they won't look to us. Mm -hmm. The wrong mindset for, spirit, you know, for church people to have. You know, we should yeah. be rejoicing that good things are happening to, to other people. Yeah, amen, amen. Okay, brother, can I have five more minutes so I can just finish this? Okay. Question number 14. What comparison does Solomon make between the sound heart and one filled with envy? Proverbs 14, 30. I'm there uh, in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 30. The Bible says a sound heart is the life of the flesh, but envy the rottenness of the bones. Mm -hmm. So a sound heart is life. You, are, you know you are alive. But if you are you're envying, it's rottenness. You know, it really, when you, when you are jealous, envious of somebody, it's very bad. You know, it, it, it consumes you. I have seen people like that, it consumes them. To, you know, sometimes they even uh, drive them to do bad things to people or to even to become drunkard. I was just about to say, um, you know, envy can actually make you blind. It, it's not literally blind, but yeah. it just, it will mess up your judgment. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I mean, if you can, I remember a long time ago I was watching this thing um, I, th I think it was uh, Danny Vieira, and he did a presentation on how evil thoughts affect your health, and it mm -hmm. was very profound. When you have envy and hatred and all this stuff in your heart, it's actually killing you. It literally kills you. Yeah. You know how the Bible says a merry heart do, uh, does good like a medicine? A medicine, yes. But the opposite of that is... If you don't have a merry heart, you have all these bad things in your heart, you're going to start coming down with health problems. Mm -hmm. correct, you know, correct. you're going to start coming down with health problems. If you hate, if you hate your brother, you know, what good is it to call yours or at least try to call yourself a Christian? If, oh, I can't stand this person. This person is, you know, this, that and the other. We can't be like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I give you an example. Bibi, can I make you my example? Okay, one time, she was so angry. But she has a reason to be angry. It's not jealousy, but being angry. So she's angry with this man. He's our director of nursing. Because he really is doing bad. Because he will, Karen is a very fast typer. And he would type, she would type for him. And he would fall asleep. And she would wait for him to wake up. The moment he wake up, he go out and smoke. And so he, she, she told me... I, I'm very angry with him because of this and that. And, in, and it's his, he's becoming angry for uh, like a week already. So I said, Tanin, i like you to pray. Pray, ask God to remove that anger with you and just work with him. Let's just show him love. And then he di she did. And next thing you know, she, she told me, Ate, I'm happy now. I said, well, what happened? Oh, because I'm not angry with drug anymore. <laughs> I said, good, because she prayed about it. Nothing is impossible with God. We pray. We just have to pray. I tell you, that's the only solution to all our problems, really. Everything that, 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 uh, that consumes us, that, that would defile us, all you have to do is pray. God will make you away. 
that God will make a way for us. God will remove it away from us. I tell you, I told you one time, I have a very good friend of mine. This, bo- this guy said something that really made me angry. I cannot believe it. I was angry with him for a long time. And I asked God, Lord, please, please, I need you to remove this anger from me because I will go to hell if I cannot forgive this man. For a simple thing. You know what the, this man just said? He said, oh, Yoli, your bathroom is dirty. <laughs> really? You mean to tell me I'm going to accommodate you in my home and you're going to say something in my head? But, you know, I think in his, you know, you have to also look at his a point of view, you know. So I asked God to help me because I could not forgive him. I tell you the truth. I was only able to forgive him after six months. Like, when I say forgive, forgive. There's nothing, no more, that I can go back to my relationship with you without anything. And I'm talking to him. I pretended that I forgive him. But deep inside my heart, it's still there. I know. I don't even want to ask him because if I love you, I will ask favor from you. But if I do not like you, I will never ask favor from you. <laughs> and this man, I always ask favor from him. And I couldn't ask favor from him, meaning that I, don't, I have not forgiven him yet. So finally, God removed it from my heart. I was so happy. That's why it's true. It will make you rotten. It will make you rotten. I was like, I'm, because I'm the one who's not forgiving him, I'm the one who's suffering. He's not suffering. He calls me, hi, Yoli. Wow, he's so happy. I'm so sad. <laughs> because I'm the one who's not forgiving, see? That's why, that's why we have to learn how to forgive. If you're not able to ask God for help, God will help. God will help. Okay, anyhow, let's go. Uh, I want to read this. Uh, everything that I wrote, I want to be able to read before I finish. Uh, in SDA Bible Commentary, Volume 1, 163.1, it says, There is a betrayal of sacred trust. The things spoken in brotherly confidence are repeated and misrepresented. And every word, every action, however innocent and well-meaning, is scrutinized by the cold, jealous criticism of those who were thought too, no- too noble, too honorable to take the least advantage of friendly association or brotherly trust. Hearts are close to mercy, judgment, and love of God, and the cold, sneering, contemptuous spirit which Satan manifests toward his victim is revealed. I tell you this, sometimes somebody will come to you to confide in you because they trust you, because they think that you are so up there with God, and they will tell you the the inner secret of their heart. And you are so holy that you think this person that had confided in you, you, you betray them. By what? By telling somebody else. Oh, you know what? This person said this to me. But you didn't know. In the person's heart, the reason why they confide in you is because they believe that you can pray for him or her. And then there you go. You betray them because you think you're so holy. We can never think like that. We can never think that we are so holy that when somebody comes to you, you, can, you cannot even help them. But instead, you betray their trust. Okay, question 15. What is said of wisdom from above? We're almost done. Just two more questions. What is said of wisdom from above? James 3, 17. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. You see, it's from above. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure and peaceable. You're at peace with everyone. You know how to, you know, like we, we are our, each other's uh, guardian. We can correct each other, but lovingly, peacefully, not by gossiping. You don't, for example, I make a mistake. You don't uh, go to another sister and tell them, you know what, can you tell Sister Yolanda about this? No, you go to Sister Yolanda, Right? If I have a beef with Nila, I go to her. Oh, Nila, why like this? You know? So at least it's between her and I. Don't go to someone else. Go direct to the person. That's the proper way. Okay? All right. Um, MB 24.3. Jesus does not mention this ceremonial purity as one of the conditions of entering into his kingdom, but points out the need of purity in the heart. The wisdom that is from above is first pure, James 3.17. 
into the city of God, there will enter nothing that defiles. So if you want to be able to in enter to heaven, you cannot be defiled by anything. All who are to be dwellers there, here have become pure in heart. So this is where we prepare our heart on earth. Although this is infested by sin, we have to cling to God to be prepared for holiness. Pure, pureness of heart. Because if your heart is pure, you are holy, aren't you? Okay, so in one who is learning of Jesus, there will be, there will be manifest a growing distance for careless manners and seemly language in coarse thought. So, listen. There, if you are learning of Jesus, I want you to hear this. There will be, ma there will be manifest of growing distance between carelessness, between judging somebody, between pointing fingers on somebody. There will be a distance, meaning you will not go there. You will not go there because why? You're going to see yourself first. You are going to see yourself first. Coarse language, coarse thought, thought, thinking only. Remember, if you think it, you are going to say it. If you say it, you are going to do it. So don't even think. If you think about something ugly, go to your knees and ask God for help. Lord, please remove this ugly thought. And God will remove it away from you. When Christ abides in the heart, there will be purity and refinement of thought and manner. You know the reason why it's saying thought? Everything starts here first. You conceive it in your mind first. When you think of telling somebody, you think it first. You did not say it first, you think it first. You know, but there's some people too that doesn't think, they just say. That's worse. Okay? 16, last question. How is the fruit of righteous, righteousness sown? James 3.18. How is the fruit of righteousness sown? How is it sown? How do you get good fruit? And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Because if you know peace, you can, part, you, can, you can impart it, right? If you don't know it, you're not going to be able to impart it. Like what, I, like what I always say, if you do not have it, you cannot give it. Because you don't have it. Okay, may I please have a reader for note 7. Note 7. It says, sown in peace. Fields are not sown with grain in the tumult of a mob or in a battle. Nothing is more peaceful than a farmer going forth with measured tread to scatter seed over his field. The whole effect, therefore, of religion is to produce peace. It is all peace, peace in the original and in its results, in the hearts of the individual and in society, on earth and in heaven. You, you have to sow peace. And then this is our last quote now. This, uh, this day with God, 293.3. God has given his people great light on his word. But this light is a benefit to the believer only as, a, as he practices the truth. So the light that he gives you, it, it will only benefit you if you are going to practice. You remember when, when you read, you hear, you practice. Purifying his soul by obedience. Again, we come back to obedience. In Satan's, or in Satan, is Satan always to triumph because parents misrepresent God by following worldly plans? Failing to show the power of Christ to cleanse the heart? You see, talking about parents. Because it's really start from the parents. The whole church suffers when the children of one family are unruly. Christ is soon to come. Our schools are to reach the high standard of dependence on the Bible principle. Jesus is coming soon. Let's get our home prepared. Okay, let us pray. Our Father God in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for this lesson. Father, please help us to be faithful to you. Please help us to be a good example to our children. And I lift up our children into your throne of grace. I pray, Father, that... Uh, 
as a parent, we may bear the fruit that you want us to bear so that our children can see that, so that our children can follow our footsteps, that so that when you come again, if we are not in this world anymore, our children will stand firm for the truth. Thank you, Father, for always hearing and answering our prayers. And please, Lord, forgive us for our sins. In Jesus' name.